it's a great thing. Here I am. Uh, nice to see you guys tonight, uh, this evening, uh, this afternoon for you on the on the uh, West Coast. Uh, but uh, we're going to uh, get started here in a minute. Uh, if you would, uh, those of you in the room, type in uh, type in where uh, who you are and uh, where you're where you're uh, watching or listening from. That'd be great. We have John in 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 the Big Apple, New York City. Hello, John. Nice to have you here uh, with us tonight. And uh, um, others of you that are in the room, please do uh, mention uh, where you're where you're where you're uh, where you're at. And uh, that'd be great. And we'll get we'll get started here in a <clears throat> here in a just a couple of couple of more minutes. And just want to give everybody a plenty of time to get in the room, but uh, uh, get in the room and get situated. Uh, Lake Lake Worth, Florida, and I think that is um, the name isn't on there, but I think it's um, I want to say uh, Paige. Uh, I remember correctly, uh, but um, those of you that are calling from, are, are we allowed to z join from Zoom? Unfortunately, not. Uh, you cannot join from Zoom either. <clears throat> you can <clears throat> watch it from either uh, YouTube TV or on Facebook. Uh, really, the only only uh, only streaming uh, that we're doing on for this uh, for this workshop. Watching from Samantha is watching from Oregon. Hello, Samantha. I have a really good friend that lives just south of Portland. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I guess it's Charney is from Athens, Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, Sonia is from Arizona. We have Claremont, Florida, Berkeley, California. Vivian, hello. Nice to have you in the room tonight as well. Yeah, I did get it right, Paige. Nice to nice to have you in the room. Um, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Uh, Taylor's way way up in Bloomfield, Connecticut. That's that's uh, on up there. So we're gonna uh, start off by uh, just catching everybody up. If you haven't been in the in, in any of the other workshops, just want to kind of give you a sense of sense of what we what we've been doing and what we're talking about. Uh, tonight, this is really all about uh, preparing, helping you prepare for for the MMI, for the multiple mini interview, and uh, we'll look at uh, several things tonight. So, in review, uh, what is an MMI? Uh, MMI is, as I said, multiple mini interview. It's a series of of uh, stations that are typically short, about eight minutes. And uh, each are inter independent of, of the others. They don't connect with necessarily each other. They all present an, an independent question or scenario of some, some sort that you then respond to within the context of that question or scenario uh, to the interviewer that's in the room. You could be asked to act out um, a, a role in the in the uh, in, with the interviewer, you could be asked simply to give your opinion about something, or to talk about yourself uh, in some way. It's really meant to assess a variety of of skills that are important uh, to uh, medical schools, and also I think important to the uh, the the life and work of a physician. Those among them being oral communication. Uh, can you communicate? Can you establish rapport with me as an individual? Also, we uh, they they uh, assess critical thinking skills, and this is the idea of thought process of how do you think through a particular scenario or problem, uh, or how do you think through an issue that you're being asked to address? They're looking at: Are you self-aware? Do you do you are you able to sort of know who you are as an individual and uh, therefore be able to uh, have uh, a response to a particular question based on who you are, your self-awareness, ethically, for, for example, based on what we're talking about here, but also in other, other ways uh, as well. 
Um, a variety of uh, issues come up sometimes in these in these scenarios, uh, particularly in ethical scenarios that that you might uh, see uh, presented to you in the within the context of the multiple mini interview. Uh, I've listed out a, a variety of them here. We've talked about these uh, each week. Uh, certainly, there are medical issues. You're not meant to know. Uh, in particular, what the medical issues might be or what the solutions to those medical issues might be. There may be legal issues involved. Typically, there are legal issues involved. What they're looking for is you, you recognize, not that you know the legal aspects in detail of a particular case, but that you know that there are legal implications to what you're doing. There are often cultural issues involved. Uh, that go along sometimes with language, uh, uh, the you know the lack of ability to speak a particular language or cultural differences that might be exhibited within the context of a medical uh, a medical situation. There are often institutional issues involved. Uh, for example, hospital rules and policies. Socially, there can be uh, there can be aspects uh, of the uh, uh, of the scenario or the situation that are socially uh, indicated. So, so things like, for example, uh, a, a, a destitute individual comes into the emergency room. What, why, what might that mean in terms of how you treat them or, or what, how they may fear the situation of having to have come into the, to the ER or into your clinic, et cetera, and there can often be financial issues as well. We've talked about uh, developing this framework for understanding and making decisions on ethical uh, dilemmas. Um, so we've talked about this, and, and I think this is really important that you have, that you sort of approach it in this kind of framework. Uh, and that would be uh, you identify the problem. What, what is the issue? So when you're reading for the MMI, for example, the, the, the scenario presented to you, uh, what is actually the dilemma involved? What's the problem or the issue that is being addressed uh, or that they are asking you to address in this MMI station? You have to understand that there are certain things that you know, facts, for example, that you know that are, that are given to you in the scenario and that there are other unknowns that you do not know. Being able to recognize that and express to the interviewer, for example, that uh, you don't know certain things about the situation, but depending on what the solution is, what the solution might uh, be, might be dependent on X, Y, or Z that we don't really know. Uh, then you try to delineate what are the various options I have available to me. Last week we did this where we had the scenario with Sarah and Edna in the domestic abuse case where we looked at a variety of options uh, that were presented to us, uh, how those options work their way out, and what might be the most reasonable of those options uh, as, a, as a course of action. And then ultimately, you answer the question. So a lot of this you're doing quickly. Uh, you have two minutes to look at the uh, scenario, look at the problem presented to you for the MMI station, and then you have to sort of develop what you are thinking about in terms of uh, a, a reasonable uh, solution for that. So we're going to look at uh, a scenario here. And this is actually the, the uh, scenario I'm going to present here first is one that does come up in MMI, um, uh, MMI stations at various uh, medical schools around the country. This is one that has been reported to us. So this is a real MMI uh, question. So here's the ethical scenario we're going to look at here for just a few minutes. You discover that your best friend in medical school has cheated on an assignment. What do you do? So think about that for a few minutes. You discover that your best friend in medical school has cheated on an assignment. What are you going to do? So this would be a uh, a, a scenario presented to you. You have a couple of minutes to think about all that's involved. 
and uh, and then you uh, and then you enter into the room, and you're going to talk about what would you do. And this could be presented as a uh, acting scenario. I haven't phrased it that way for this for our purposes tonight, uh, but it could be uh, that the the interviewer is your best friend. You enter the room, and you are asked to enter the room and talk to your best friend about the situation. Uh, this, uh, I present it as, as a, just a, a, what, what would you do? So what, what I would ask you is, is to respond in the comments section, uh, and, uh, let me know what, what do you think you would do in this particular case? Now you may have faced this before in high school or in, in, in your college experience. Uh, you may have faced it where you knew somebody had cheated on a test or on an assignment of some sort, and you were, you were faced with a dilemma. What am I going to do here? So my question is, what are you going to do? What is the, what is the answer to this question? What, and, and, and not that there's a right answer, but how are you going to develop? What are you going to do in this and why? Uh, so let me hear what your thoughts are. What do you, what do, you do here uh, in this uh, particular uh, situation, in this scenario? Uh, this could very well happen. Uh, I have uh, been uh, in uh, medical schools previously where uh, this did happen. Uh, a, uh, a student was caught cheating, and because, uh, because he was uh, cheating, he, he had been, uh, uh, there, there were some, um, some consequences to that. But uh, I want to hear your thoughts about what, what you would do in this particular situation. So the only comment that we have so far is oh gosh <laughs> so uh yeah this is uh, a difficult one a uh, difficult situation that you might that you might face but i'd like to hear your thoughts this is interactive ladies and gentlemen so uh, i want to hear what you what you have to say about uh, what you would do in this particular situation uh maybe you faced it before maybe you can uh type in the comments what you uh, what you did or, or what certainly what you think you would do so Matt says, um, I talked to my talk to my friend and ask him what's going on, find out why he felt like he needed to cheat. Okay. So kind of get with the friend and sort of understand better. Uh, Zazai says, I I tell on anyone, but not my best friend. Uh, I would just let them know that eventually would catch up to them. So sort of uh that uh, you you wouldn't confront, you wouldn't tell on them, but you might tell. So Zazai says, I would tell on somebody else, but not my best friend. Interesting. Samantha says, I would first discuss what I saw with my friend. And if they did cheat, I would encourage them to turn themselves in. If they refused, I would feel morally obligated to notify the instructor myself. Okay. So Samantha is taking sort of the moral high ground and, and saying this has got to be resolved and uh, needs to. Uh, Colby says I would confront them first. I think uh, that that is is a common theme here that we that I'm seeing. Brian uh, says my first thought would be to talk to the friend and strongly encourage them to come forward and take responsibility for themselves. Uh, good uh, good response there. Paige says I think it depends on the length the friend went to cheat, but. I would talk to my friend and I would, uh, would report them. I think depending on the circumstances, I would distance myself. John, uh, again, says I would speak to them one-on-one, -on -one, ask them why they did it. Uh, take the, uh, is there anything that we can understand the topic better? Uh, yeah. If, is there some way, if it was an exam, for example, for example, I think John is saying, you know, can we work together to understand it better? So you feel like you don't have to cheat. Yeah, I get it. I get it, John. Uh, Vanessa says, try to explain to, to the, the, uh, the friend, the implication of their behavior beyond medical school, see if they want to turn themselves in. So this is a very interesting point that Vanessa is making here. Implications beyond medical school. What are the implications beyond medical school? Uh, if the student cheats in medical school, does that perhaps, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, signal what they may be willing to do ethically, questionably, uh, 
questionable ethical behaviors in the future uh, as a practicing physician in, in residency, et cetera. Frisca says, first, I would talk to my friend. I would say that I uh, do not want to be too intrusive, but have a few concerns. Professionalism and honesty are very important in order to be a future doctor. Getting back to uh, Vanessa's point, a absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, John adds, also, it depends on the exam. I would want to convince the student to go forward with turning themselves in. Uh, if they catch him cheating, it's a lot worse than turning himself, turning himself in. Yeah, potentially, I, I agree with that. A lot of comments here. We we seen confront them in a gentle way, says uh, Charnay. Uh, uh, I think that's uh, Charney, Charnay. I'm not sure. Uh, they feel it was net. Why did they feel it was necessary? Good. Yeah, that's sort of a common theme that we're seeing. Also, uh, it would be dishonest to say that I would rat out my friend. However, that is the start of a huge problem. My friend is likely engaging in studying habits that are ineffective and are choosing uh, the wrong way, I guess. Um, uh, Matt says, I bring it to his or her attention that I am aware of their actions and let them know it's unethical. I would also let them know how horrible of a spot they have put me in. Interesting. Uh, maybe... Uh, you know, you being, uh, you know, their best friend, but also a, 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 also a student in the class. If the, if the, uh, if the, the, the exam or the assignments graded on the curve at all, this could affect you as well as others in the class, uh, potentially. Uh, small problems, uh, continuing small problems lead to larger ones. This dishonesty could encourage them to more be more extreme have more extreme behaviors like making a huge medical mistake in the future i would confront and ask my professor for advice so this is also a, a good in uh, a, a good point here uh asking uh maybe a professor maybe a different professor for advice what do you think i should do without indicating who the student was uh, what what are the the uh you know, getting some good advice from maybe others at the institution. So there's a lot of different ways that you can look at a scenario like this. And, and I think that, you know, we have to look at what what are the issues here? Uh, what are the issues in this scenario? What, uh, what, what all is involved here? And you guys have really hit on a lot of that. And so I think it's, it's really good. What are the, again, going back to the framework, what are the possible solutions here? You know, on one end of the extreme, we could say, well, I'm going to turn them in immediately, not discuss it with them, cut and dry, turn them in. The other extreme would be not discuss it, ignore it, just mind your own business, let things happen however they're going to happen. And then there's a variety of others in, the, in, in, the, in between uh, talking to the uh, student, for example, uh, in, in a variety of different ways. So... Another question I have here is, does it matter if instead of this cheater being your best friend, that it was just another random classmate, you know, perhaps somebody that you really don't know very well that's in your, that's in your class? Would that change your behavior, how you looked at this particular situation? How would that affect it? <laughs> um. Sorry, Boomer, I didn't mean to skip your, uh, I, I skipped a bunch of them. So let me, let me go back and see. So Boomer says, I would not tell anyone. Why would I? He is uh, under stress to get into medical school and a little bit cheating on MMI is okay. <laughs> does, that does not mean he is a bad person or will not become a good doctor. Okay, well, Boomer, you're, you're absolutely in the minority uh, of the, uh, of those uh, making uh, making their comments uh, with that particular comment, I I don't agree with your position, but you know maybe others maybe others uh, would. And again, Boomer, as well as others, there's no right or wrong uh, answer here. Again, what the MMI is looking for is your thought process and thinking about what uh, what uh, what this might be. So, does it matter that this that this student is your best friend? Would it would it be different for you if it wasn't your best friend? What if it was somebody you really didn't know in the class? How would that affect your uh, uh, your uh, behavior? Uh, what you would do? 
Uh, Paige says, this is a hard one. It is a conflict of my own feelings of honesty versus loyalty. I don't think it would change my behavior. Uh, all my classmates are important. The camaraderie is important to me. Absolutely. Uh, camaraderie is, is very important. Um, Adriana says, no, I think we are all in this together. We are all test takers. Uh, that we, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it shouldn't matter, says Trish. It shouldn't matter the personal relationship. Uh, Frista says, what about if my friend is experiencing a very difficult time in their personal life, like a death of a family member or illness? Uh, does that justify uh, cheating on an exam or on an assignment? Uh, what are the implications of that? What are, what are the potential consequences of that? Good good points all to be made. Uh, so what we're going to do next in, in jumping off from this is we're going to look at uh, a video clip. Uh, and this video clip is from a movie from 1962. Uh, the movie is called The Interns. It's a film uh, about life as a resident in a, in a busy metropolitan hospital. And there's a variety of issues that are that are uh, dealt with in this film. A lot of it's sort of, sort of dramatic mumbo jumbo stuff, but there are some really important things that we could take away from this film. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna view a, a little clip here of this, and I have I have to hasten to say that I actually own the DVD of this film. Uh, we are using this clip for educational purposes only, uh, and uh, so I, I need to hasten to add that that's the. That's the situation with this particular clip. So I'm going to show this, and uh, and then we're going to talk about it. So let's watch this this movie clip to to uh, together, and uh, see uh, see what you think uh, about it. So we're going to. There's not much choice. Do you want to have the baby? I hate the risk for you, dear. Dear, what is that? Some. Let me know on. if you can hear it. Okay. Some fresh brawn. Don't joke, please. What's wrong with us? We never mention love. We get so smart, we outsmart ourselves. It's such a difficult thing to say. I love you. I love you. I love you. Lou, Mrs. Bridler's way overdue. She'll weaken if her labor's prolonged. Uh, those contractions will have to be stimulated. Well, okay, how much bit? One minute. Mine's the tuna on wheat. Drug closet, Abby. I need an ampule of bit. Oh, all right, Doctor. Uh, finish your coffee, Lou. I'll, I'll go with her. What do you want to Thanks. do about that tuna sandwich? Oh, I'll be back for it. Doctor, did you all get that laundry back from the laundry that you said you'd lost? Yeah, I got it, Abby. Well, I got mine, too, but really, that laundry's doing the most awful work now. It's clean enough, but I have to press everything. Abby, come on, your coffee's getting cold. Oh, all right, in just a minute. Uh, why don't you go ahead, Abby? I'll, I'll, I'll lock it up. Oh, thank you very much, Doctor. something you don't understand. Johnny, it's wrong. Put it back. Stop talking like a kid. Nobody's going to know in your life. Oh, not you, Johnny. It's a criminal act. But think about us, our clinic. We'd never be able to trust well, each other again. get back in that lounge and let me alone. No, I can't. Now, give me that to me. I'll put it back. Listen, for once, do something for me. Just for once, will you? Can we use that to save lives? Will you forget about that damn code of ethics? I believe in that oath. Johnny, don't. Don't make me turn you in. You wouldn't do that, Lou.
What is it, Lou? stand up in a court of law. But I'll tell you one thing. You'll never get a license to practice medicine in this country. If I can, I'll run you right out of the profession. This is a uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, scenario here. I hope you were able to sort of get the drift of what's going on. Let me just cover this briefly. John and Lou went to medical school together. They are now residents uh, in their first year of residency at this hospital. They planned on opening a clinic. Uh, after residency to serve an underserved population uh, in uh, a rural area in the, in the uh, southwestern United States. Uh, John has become involved with a, a young lady, a model, and has gotten her pregnant. And uh, they are contemplating, as you saw at the very beginning of the beginning of the clip, they are contemplating what they should do. And they've come to the conclusion that a, an abortion is the right thing. Of course, these are the years before abortion was legal in the United States. And uh, so he is stealing Pitocin, uh, the uh, drug that is used to in, in, induce labor. Uh, and to induce a, an abortion for this uh, young woman. So he is taking it. Lou catches him, you saw, and it, the rest of the rest of the uh, clip, you uh, clearly saw what, what the dilemma was for Lou. So this is very interesting. This is very, um, uh, very similar to what we were just talking about, although the stakes are clearly much higher. What would you do? What would you do being in Lou's position? How would you, uh, do you tell the attending physician about John stealing the medication? Be really interested to hear your thoughts about this. What if he wasn't your best friend? Going back to what we talked about earlier. What are the implications of turning him in for both yourself as well as for John? What are the implications of not turning him in for you as well as for John? So if this was a situation uh, that you were presented with in an MMI, you wouldn't obviously be shown a video. But if you were given the situation in writing, what would you do? So Moya says uh, he did the right thing. This time it's taking pills. The next time it may be shortcutting a procedure or being neglectful in other ways that may put patients lives in danger. Uh, so shuck, I guess, uh, I honestly liked how he said, I'll put it away for you so they could put it behind their back. Uh, Lou did the right thing says Trish. Um, uh, stealing is not an, is not acceptable. Uh, says Trish again, but I would have done the same thing. Boomer says, in this case, I will tell the necessary people to stop stealing. This is not the same as cheating a bit. 
in MMI? Well, you know, again, uh, Boomer, I, I'd be interested to know, uh, is future behavior a, con a d does, cur d does current behavior or past behavior have any indication about future behavior? If you're willing to do one thing, what are the what are the what's going to stop you doing other things? That's sort of a question that might might be needing to uh, to be dealt with. So so I guess my question is: in an MMI, given this scenario, what would the what would what would your response be? What would uh, the response of uh, of the uh, and 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 Boomer says this is not the same. Boomer says this that the uh, situations are completely different. I guess that's I'm putting your words in your mouth, Boomer. But um, so John says the only way to judge future behavior is to see your past behavior. Uh, if you're willing to do one thing in the past that cuts ethical short is a shortcut. Now in this particular case, we're dealing with not just um, not simply uh, um, an ethical dilemma. We're dealing with a legal dilemma. This, this is uh, clearly against the law. Uh, he would be uh, there would not only be implications for his for him within the context of his profession, but also within the context of, of the legal. Uh, the legal system as well, uh, and, and Lou pointed that out. Uh, VJ says, if any, if everyone let their best friend steal, then we would have a lot of thieves in the world. I think he did the right thing by telling Anita. I would have. Anita says, I wouldn't. I would have told on him because stealing isn't acceptable. Fritzda says, I think this is a very complicated scenario. Yes, because abortion is considered ethical in some countries and not ethical in others. But according to the law of that time, I would report him. Yeah, Paige says, I think most people can distinguish between infractions. A lot of people speed up speed, but a lot of people are not performing grand theft auto. Good, good point, uh, Paige. That's a good a good comparison. Uh, traffic laws versus uh, breaking a traffic law like speeding versus stealing a car. Uh, uh, good, good, good comparison or, or contrast, I guess. Uh, Trish says once a certain ethical barrier is broken, is it much easier? It is much easier to do more unethical actions. There are actually here in the state of Texas, there's actually been a study done of uh, cases. It's very difficult to do this kind of study, but the study looked at those that have been brought before the state medical board for clearly unethical, bordering on illegal actions, and they were trying to search back into their into these particular doctors' pasts to see if they had been uh, if there had been ethical problems in their past, such as cheating or or other things like that. Were there indications? in the past of these particular physicians that were being brought before the medical board that had been dismissed from the profession, uh, were there things in their past that could have, could have been um, like signals of, of difficult, uh, of, of, of unethical thinking or whatever. Uh, VJ says it's John's choice to steal and it's his choice to face the consequences that could come with the potential of getting caught. Absolutely. So uh, Vanessa says, like I said before, if I if I if if it wasn't my friend, I'll talk to their friend first. I'll, I agree that past behaviors are indications of present or future behaviors. Good. Yeah, I see. I think y'all you guys are really thinking this through in in a very appropriate way. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong answer here that is being looked at looked for necessarily in these uh, these situations. What they're looking for in an MM, MMI is how are you thinking through this? Argue to yourself, argue the side of turning him in and then argue the side of not turning him in. And what, what they're looking at, what are you thinking about? How are you thinking through the scenario? How are you thinking about this? And, and again, the framework is important. What, what are the objectives here? What are the potential options available to you? 
uh, that you might could uh, that you might could could could, uh, could do not turn him in, turn him in. How you respond to him, Lou, in this particular situation was uh, was clear that he uh, thought the behavior was unacceptable, both ethically as well as he brought up the law uh, that it's a, it's against the law. Um, we have one comment. Are these comments visible or should we be using map to count? No, I, th I think you can see the comments. I, I, I don't really know, but I think you can see each other's comments uh, as well. Um, so this is a good, uh, a good exercise for us. And, 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 and again, I think the comparison of cheating uh, versus um, the cheating scenario that we started with versus this scenario of stealing of medications from a hospital. It'd be much more difficult to do that today because of hospitals have, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, both te technological ways to uh, a lot for when medications are taking it out, taken out, who took them out for what patient. Uh, there's a lot, a lot more, um, it's a lot different now than it was then, but I think the the uh, scenario is, is the same. You know, uh, again, uh, we have physicians in this country that do these things, uh, do these things, and get some get caught and some don't. Uh, the op op opioid crisis uh, has caught up not only physicians who have considerably gone overboard on prescribing op op opioids, but pharmacists have been gotten caught up in this who have filled uh, prescriptions uh, unabashedly uh, clearly outside the the uh, bounds of, of what was appropriate and uh, there many many of them are, are facing uh, facing legal legal consequences because of that a good ex is a good example there are other examples in the in the in the medical profession of, of physicians who overbill uh, Medicaid, for example, and uh, have a uh, ha have been brought before the medical board, lost their licenses, but have also been charged with, convicted of, and are now serving prison terms for uh, for a fraud. Uh, so just because, and so really, what we're dealing with here is not only not only ethics, but also professionalism. What does it mean to be a professional, and what does it mean to be a professional, and how does that obligation uh, ethics being one of those that uh, that uh, is in, are really important issues related to uh, medical school, but also in the future into uh, the practice of of, uh, of medicine. Um, very uh, very uh, very good comments that you guys have here. So I'm I'm very I'm proud of you. There's again, we're not going to solve all the problems here. We're not going to solve. This this particular situation, but the movie presented it in a way that I thought was really excellent to get us thinking about um, the, these ethical dilemmas and uh, what would you do and how would you respond to that. The key here being and the point being, how would you respond to the situation uh, of uh, of of your best friend, uh, a, a, a uh, also a peer resident. Or a peer doctor, and, and I'll bring up another uh, real case uh, situation that happened uh, in my state in Dallas, uh, where a neurosurgeon was uh, uh, abusing alcohol and drugs, and still doing surgery. Uh, he ended up uh, killing some patients, uh, not not uh, intentionally, but because of his negligence, and uh, and this happened over a course of many years. And he was eventually brought to trial, convicted, and is now in prison. But what they traced back was colleagues who had who had not stepped in and not not not, anything, not said anything. So this is a very important piece also. <clears throat> so I want to thank you all for for joining joining me on on this uh, things to remember. Uh, uh, let me point this out: that there's not necessarily a right answer here. The way you respond uh, is you're thinking about this. You say this is a difficult situation. 
uh, that we that we have been presented with here. There are multiple options. There are things I don't know. There are things I know. And you run through with the with the interviewer your thoughts about the situation. What perhaps are options available to you? Uh, for example, in this, not telling or telling. If you're going to tell, how are you going to tell? Who are you going to tell? Uh, are you going to talk to simply talk to your friend if he chooses to still steal the medication, then what do you do? Uh, are you going to continue to pursue uh, pursue that with uh, with the appropriate authorities? So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, over the course of the last four weeks, we've gone through a lot of different scenarios. And uh, I hope that it's been interesting and, and helpful and, and thought-provoking. Uh, and uh, I would encourage you to uh, seek out uh, some um, other uh, resources on, on the inter Internet, perhaps. Uh, Google, you, you know, just Google uh, medical ethics scenarios and see what's presented to you and, and, and read through those uh, is a good way to prepare for the for uh, ethical situations in an MMI setting. Well, we do these kinds of workshops uh, through MAPT uh, on a variety of uh, uh, variety of topics. Last uh, last uh, fall, we did uh, we did some on personal characteristics that medical schools are looking for. Uh, this this time uh, here this spring, we've done. Uh, We've done this ethics workshop focusing on the MMI. Uh, next fall, we'll do another one. Uh, who knows? I've got some thoughts about the topic in preparation for uh, for your applying to and and uh, getting into and in, in medical school and doing well. So thank you for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Always, I encourage you to email me if you have comments or questions. Uh, that would be great. In fact, I'll put that on the, uh, here is my email address, scott at mapped.com. Uh, don't hesitate to email me if you have any questions or if you have comments that you'd like to hear. Maybe, maybe you have a, a, a topic that you think would be a good workshop topic that we could go uh, talk about. And I'd be really interested to hear, hear your, uh, hear your thoughts uh, about that. So I hope things have a great I hope you guys have a great uh, evening, a great re remainder of your semester or quarter, whichever system you're in, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Get out and do something fun. Take a walk, uh, something to get energized for the rest of your evening, as, as I'm going to do. And uh, I, I haven't done this before, but I think some of you have made comments before. And just to sort of uh, show you a little bit uh, of my personal Life. If I turn the camera a little bit, we see laying in the blue chair is my little my little friend, my best friend, Wilkie. Hey, Wilkie, how are you? <laughs> and he's been he's been with me every 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 night. He's my he's my uh, companion here, and uh, just wanted to show him. He's kind of we we talk about him being the mapped the uh, mapped. Um, uh, the, the sort of uh, uh, the, the the mapped guy for us. This is our our, our little guy for for maps. So, but enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, have a good night, and I will uh, talk to you again, perhaps soon. Take care, everybody. <laughs>